Winning the chaotic competitive business world tomorrow means that you prepare today with information, insight and the latest intel. Here in Biznomics, that's exactly what we intend to deliver to you. Welcome to your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. I'm Tarun Amar Sekara. When you think of a marketplace from a broad perspective, there are always two parties. You get the buyers and you get the sellers. Having a level playing field for both these parties is essential for a successful economy to function. Now sometimes this might tilt a little bit towards in a more positive way for the suppliers with a disadvantage to the consumers. That can lead to many inefficiencies, many uh, imperfections in the market which is ideally not preferred. A party that makes sure that this doesn't happen, an entity that ensures that consumers have a fair voice, that the consumer rights are protected, is the Consumer Affairs Authority. Today, in Biznomics, let's discuss about the status of consumer rights in Sri Lanka, what you need to know as a businessman and as a consumer with regard to the consumer protection and consumer rights. And joining me for this discussion is a board member from the Consumer Affairs Authority, Mr. Viraj Pereira. Viraj, welcome to Biznomics. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you, for the, thank you, Tarun Narindu, for inviting me for this interview. Viraj, now, this word consumer rights or consumer protection, you know, we hear it all the time, and I'll be very honest with you. Whenever there is a scandal or scam, we hear this getting spoken in a big way. And then after a few more days or weeks, no one talks about it. But I believe it's important that consumers and also the business community of this country has a thorough understanding about what this is about. Tell us, what exactly when we say consumer protection, what does it include? You are the expert on this, share the details. Yeah, uh, you get uh, many uh, institutions around the world to look after consumers and look after consumer rights. So in Sri Lanka, we have a consumer affairs authority, uh, which is uh, governed by a state ministry. And uh, we, uh, there's a, uh, the structure of this uh, institution is basically we, uh, uh, this was, uh, passed in the uh, Act in 2003, Act number 9, that's a law. So uh, for what our main duty is to uh, look after the interest of consumer in Sri Lanka. In that, according to the constitution, there are uh, key uh, points. Say, first right is to basically uh, to protect consumers against uh, marketing tools. As you know, uh, in the commercial world, there are many uh, uh, what do you call uh, marketing jargons happening around and uh, you know all the companies are fighting with each other to basically get more market share so with that uh, many uh, consumers are basically have got affected because uh, to win your uh, competition you have to basically uh, uh, reduce your cost and also show you're better better so we hear a lot of these marketing campaigns and various ad campaigns and all these things we right mm -hmm. so sometimes they promise things to customers which are not true for example they might give a particular medicine and say that this is going to give you a fat loss effect or a whitening effect and various various terms. i mean we are not talking about a particular brand yeah. but there have been so many brands that have violated the rights of the consumer so what you're saying is that preventing those and protecting the customer, that's the duty of the Consumer Affairs Authority. Yes, that's very much. And also, not only products, we are looking at services as well. Services also. Products and services. Right. Uh, actually, I would, go, I would like to mention the key four points. Please, please. Yeah, actually, the first one is to basically protect the consumer against the marketing goods and goods and basically to provision of services which are hazardous to life and property of consumers. Okay. That's the key number one. And uh, the number two is uh, protect consumers against unfair trade practices, which is happening around the world. And like uh, when you say unfair trade practices, that's like collusions, price fixing. Price fixing and also counterfeit and also uh, duplicate products coming into the market. Right. And, uh, and Low quality products being dumped. And also, uh, uh, we are trying to control the un un unnecessary competition between the suppliers. So the competition means there will be many malpractices around. Correct. So they cut corners somewhere. Yes. So 
we are looking to that as well. And finally, uh, to seek this uh, redress against the, uh, these unfair practices. And uh, we are there to basically guide the consumer or help the consumer to uh, cover his or her loss. Or maybe at least try to, you know, uh, help them to overcome the situation. Yes. That's what we, uh, the, that's what the, the, the key factors. Understood, understood. Let's talk about, let's say, if a customer feels that something unfair has happened or that he or she has been uh, cheated and at a point like that, can they come and complain to the Consumer Affairs Authority and what kind of assistance will they get, Viraj? Yeah, it's a very valid point. Actually, in well, uh, Let me tell you why I'm asking yeah. this. A lot of the time people feel that there is nothing that they can do and that um, they don't know that there are opportunities for them to come forward and get some help. They feel they are helpless and at the mercy of some of these very uh, bogus companies. But that's not the case, isn't it? Yeah, actually, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, when we took over as a, uh, under the new management, so uh, we decided because many consumers, they don't know their rights. What exactly, are their rights? Exactly my point. So even you and I, we have rights. Because if you buy a pen today, you have right to ask from your supplier, the manufacturer, the durability and the exact cost. So that's our right, basically. So we are there to protect that because, and uh, we, uh, we just recently we started a, a camp marketing campaign as well. We had the protect Consumer Protection Day. From uh, th that day onwards, we have a, a tool that we promote our uh, what do you call services to the consumers. But still, we say that we have there's enough room for us to communicate this to consumers. Even from uh, the top conglomerate to the end user, you you have rights. This is this is your this is the product that you buy. So you have right to know about your product. I didn't know that. I thought I had buy from the shop and my right is the bill. But you are saying no. I can actually talk to the manufacturer and yes. ask for information. Information. Oh, that's your right. And sometimes it might be hazardous to you yourself, your health. Or maybe they must be using a, a different raw material which, which are not suitable for you. Maybe a particular paint that paint. may be bad for yeah, a kid with asthma or something. Exactly. There are many products. So that's your right. And uh, we, uh, in our act, it covers that uh, you have to basically uh, show, if it's a product, you have to show that what are the ingredients in this particular product. Viraj, we see an increasing uh, trend now where, especially some of the food manufacturers, they are showing the level of sugar in the uh, products yes. that they have and all, all these some of these things that we see as a result of the action being taken where the manufacturers earlier you really don't know yes whereas now they have to show whether this is like a uh, whether this is like a high sugar or whether it's a medium sugar level so all this improves the consumers awareness of what they buy and what you're saying is that's their right yes exactly that's their right and uh, as you uh, asked me uh, any consumer in sri lanka within our territory we have we have given we actually we have a hotline actually a uh, uh, very few people are using that hotline it's a 48 hotline please uh, share the number yeah it's a 1977 1977 you can think of you know uh, the year uh, of year, year democracy year, or something but open economy we had the, the open the, economy yes right. yes so and it's 1977 call anytime then uh, one of our uh, officers will assist you and they listen to your uh, issue and they will answer you and they will they will guide you to make the co complaint mm. and after that it's they will take the responsibility of having the inquiry and sort your problem we are there to support you viraj i want to throw a little case to you because yeah. i know you are you are a very practical hands on case oriented person now we see a lot of companies in sri lanka where actually especially in the recent times we see some small little mini marts that have popped up where they import food products and sell here. Now, some of these places, when you go, the expiry date, manufacture date, you can't find. You just can't find. So something is a little fishy. Are you saying that if a consumer feels that, look, this place is probably trying to alter certain dates and try to sell, can they call and complain? Obviously, you can. Actually, uh, according to our right, uh, act, you have to mention the retail price the date you manufacture and the date of expiry. 
it's compulsory. If a person or a company is selling without those tags, labels, you can call us and tell us. This is this is what this is this is our basically this is our duty. And the caller's anonymity will be maintained. O obviously, hundred percent yes. Understood. And uh, and if 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 the uh, the consumer wants to come and uh, explain, they can come to our office anytime. We are at Vauxhall Street. Okay. At the Trade Minister office. So, yes, there are officers around, uh, and they will help you. When we compare uh, the Sri Lanka's um, consumer rights situation with the rest of the world, Viraj. Where do you think we stand? Because we see in some of the Western uh, counterparts, you know, we see that the consumer rights are at a very strong level. I'm sure we are also getting there. But uh, where where do you see us on that global scale? Because I'm sure you've done some studies comparing Sri Lanka with the rest of the world, etc. Yeah. Where do you think we stand? Well, uh, I would say that there is enough room to improve. And uh, yes, we are on the correct path. And uh, with the recent developments, and uh, we are in a uh, we are in a process of changing the act according to the uh, future, because we are looking at modern trade as well. That's where the people uh, people are th you know that that will be the future, modern trade. The the, the traditional uh, marketplace. The will mom and pop shops are going out. Yes, traditional marketplace will shift into the uh, hypermarkets, and that's the future. And Correct. people will use the plastic cards, plastic what you call plastic money to make the payments with the current situation. Correct. So, uh, the normal shop would not invest in, in plastic shops, uh, plastic cards, but I would not say that these industries would, uh, you know, vanish in the future. But they will have to shift into the future. For sure. And for that, there's a cost income. So, we should, uh, uh, as a as government institution, we should basically encourage them to basically think of these products. Yeah, but there are some places where they say if you're paying by card, We'll, we will charge you that 3% more. Yes. They sometimes, I mean, it, I believe it depends on the agreement that they have, but they try to pass it, pass that cost to the customer, and then we will talk about this after the upcoming short break as well, about when you go to online. Now, that's a dangerous uh, place because sometimes people buy through these various Facebook shops and various other groups and all that, and they fall into some real trouble at various different points. Viraj. But what you're saying is that as the intermediaries, the hypermarkets, or in other words, the modern trade, modern trade. the supermarkets, etc., as they gain a more dominant role, because let's admit, about a few decades ago, it was mainly in the Colombo district that we saw all this modern trade taking place, but today, I believe it's everywhere in the country. The supermarkets are coming into the picture in a big way. So, as that happens, what you're saying is the consumer rights need to be adopted and adapted, uh, and I also see a problem in the fact that even in some of our leading education programs and business programs, consumer rights and all is not properly focused on. Am I correct to see that as a problem? Yes, actually, uh, this uh, information, uh, I think it should start from uh, at this ordinary level studies. So we need to, you know, you do commerce for your ordinary level studies. Yeah. So I think this should be included. Then uh, f from there onwards, you know that there are institutions like this to protect your con protect consumers and also your right to basically uh, question your supplier. At least know that there is a number to call, 1977. Double seven. 1977 is the number. Interesting thoughts, Viraj. We are going to continue this very insightful and very pertinent discussion. Stay tuned. We will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomics. Welcome back to Biznomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. Our focus is on the consumer rights protection, the role that Consumer Affairs Authority plays in Sri Lanka, and most importantly, how can you as a consumer know when your rights are violated and what can you do about it? To begin with, as we said before the break, if you think that you have faced an unfair situation, 1977 is the number to call. And joining me for this discussion is a board member from the Consumer Affairs Authority of Sri Lanka, Mr. Viraj Pereira. Viraj, now, the way you see it, because you are somebody who is involved in this consumer protection activity, for which we are extremely thankful to you and also the board for all the good work that is being done. Now, what are the most serious consumer rights violations that you see happening in Sri Lanka? Well, uh, Thailud, uh, uh, I can say that... Uh the most number of complaints, it's uh, due to the uh, warranty issues. 
warranty is not honored. So these things basically uh, relate to uh, consumer durables like you know mobile phones, mobile, or mobile phone electronics and also to vehicles as well. So I, and uh, I take this point because now uh, our board consists of you know, a, a knowledgeable set of people with the change of new management and uh, we practice the vistas of prosperity which was basically uh, introduced by the Senator president, president. president. Yes. yes and uh, so we are there to practice that so with that uh, we have we, we have a nice uh, combination of people and uh, we have doctors engineers IT experts so recently actually uh, I can give a simple example where we had a case about a, a vehicle supplier he had given a, given a warranty and uh, and uh, there was a problem so which that company had indicated him that these plastic components are not covered but that plastic component which is a uh, a part of this particular unit yes. a gearbox let's say so it's a it's it's a part of that com uh, component. It's like saying I cover your, I give a warranty for your, for your whole vehicle, but not the steering wheel. That mean, something, that. something like that, yes. So actually, uh, because with our knowledge, we were able to help the client. Actually, that company had been basically, uh, it was a past case right. during last time. So uh, uh, it was there for a long time, almost two years. We were able to help the Excellent. consumer, and uh, they they ultimately replaced the unit. So they were like that. So. Uh, that's a warranty is a key factor in Sri Lanka, especially for mobile phones. People yes. say many things when you buy a phone. Yes. But when they there's the sun and the moon. Yes. When you buy a phone and we use it for three, four months, then the battery goes off. Yes. Then you come and uh, ask for why is this? Then they'll say various things. You have not charged it properly. You have not used it properly, or you haven't used it properly. They can give various answers. But uh, ac uh, according to the manufacturer, the ac the battery life. It should at least you have to use. You can easily use it for twelve months, minimum for twelve minimum, months. Minimum, yeah, minimum twelve months. Yes. So that's that's the warranty that give manufacturer gives. So why the supplier cannot give that? Which means either this phone is a fake one yeah. or refurbished one. There are many incidents uh, like that. So we are basically looking at that. And the other one is the uh, product expiry date violations. It happened as as we discussed earlier. So uh, some people actually we have found out they import. You know. Uh, products from various other countries and uh, they they change the label in the ship and it comes to Sri Lanka so with, we a, with a new manufacturer and a new expiry date. exactly so and we see uh, so we we import actually we, we are in a customs clear according to the law and regulation in Sri Lanka but when you buy the item and use it for some time and start giving the issues so then only you can see that and then when you go through the serial numbers or whatever the numbers inside then you can see the exact manufacturer did and also it comes to the FMCG products as well you know Correct. food or items food, product. food products. And Viraj, what you are saying is that you can't be selling a food product without proper expiry date and all that and when you ask them you can't say we don't know you can't say that that means the shop is responsible, responsible. to give that information exactly and also um, we have seen many cases like that, you know, uh, uh, substandard products are does not conform to the stipulated standards. So people, we have set standards in Sri Lanka, especially for, you know, consumer daily products. And uh, we have seen that some people, they change the uh, uh, size or maybe the quantity. Mm. And uh, there are issues like that. So we are there to look up. We are, we are actually, you can complain us. If you see something like that, you can complain us. Yes. And uh, recently, uh, I hope you can remember recently, there was a problem with the uh, uh, new uh, gas cylinder coming into the market. Mm -hmm. So we saw that and uh, we informed the relevant authorities. And we are actually, uh, uh, it came as a new product, but uh, the pe some people were a bit confused with the, you know, the same cylinder came up with the different brands. So we are there to look uh, uh, protect the consumer rights. Excellent uh, work, Viraj. Let me now shift into a very pertinent area, online business. Now, Viraj, we see so many websites that are charging exorbitant amounts for basic products which are already available on the market. But no sooner some of the shops and all were closed, you know, they started charging very high prices on their websites. Now, we respect, we don't want to bring out names, 
but these practices, these malpractices were happening in Sri Lanka. Sometimes people are thinking or they are told, look, all these consumer affairs and rights and laws, those are only for the physical shops. Online is a separate market by itself, do not try to mess with that. If you buy something online, you are on your own, consumer affairs has nothing to do with it. Is that true? No. We are there to cover everything, including online trade. We cover online trade as well. Whatever the transactions happening in Sri Lanka, so we are there to protect the consumer. Uh, actually, it is irrelevant to the uh, platform that they buy. Maybe you can buy it from the normal shop or maybe you can buy online or maybe you can buy from the, the highest, uh, the, the best supermarket in Sri Lanka. We are there to cover you because that is our duty Understood. to cover you. So, uh, actually, uh, as I said earlier, we are in the process of, you know, changing the act. Amending to include some of these online. Yeah, yeah actually, we are changing the entire act. Okay. We are in the process of doing that and we are considering that. And uh, we are looking at the modern trade uh, and all hypermarkets and also the online trade as well, especially online trades and under that uh, special payment gateways because they may have received so many complaints. Correct. They have made the payment, but they have not received the good or maybe the, 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 uh, the products that they have received, it is not according to the, uh, the original uh, agreement. standards, agreement and the standards and the warranty. Now, Viraj, um, especially online, what are the serious online consumer rights violations we see? Because I mean, once again, not to bring out names of businesses because we do not want to insult any business, but it is our duty as a media also to make the people aware about what are the pitfalls that are out there and what they need to be careful of. Now, we see so many different models are like sometimes they say, uh, pay the money and keep and we will give you the product in about two, three weeks time. Sometimes they say, like you get pyramid scheme kind of ones as well, where they say, buy this product and sell to so many other people. But some of these schemes are not even legally allowed, isn't it? What are the very serious uh, consumer rights violations you see happening in online channels? Well, uh, after paying, after paying, you get the uh, different product. That's the number one, and also the what uh, they had on the website and what they delivered uh, is different. Yes, and also uh, after after the transaction, some companies uh, you won't be able to see the company again. You cannot contact the comp the seller. And also the payment gate. Phones, are phone lines are switched off, and all that. Yes, and uh, when you sell the product online, now uh, we are going. We are just about to introduce a set of rules and regulations. So you will have to follow it. from from uh, from that day onwards. You won't be able to sell whatever thing what you like to sell online. There will be a set of rules that you have to follow. So we are based. We are we are thoroughly looking at this point and to safeguard the online consumers. Viraj, what actions have the government taken, yes, the Consumer Affairs Authority plus any other related government entities, what actions have they taken to strengthen the consumer rights of Sri Lankans? Yeah, as I said that uh, we are changing the act. So in that, uh, in that we have included many things. Actually, we, have, uh, we are not thinking of next year or year after, we are thinking of maybe 10, 15 years ahead and what would be the changes like that. We may be not there, so, but still this, uh, this institution should protect consumers in Sri Lanka. So that is our interest. So we are thinking of future. Uh, definitely people will move into uh, plastic uh, money. Like credit cards, etc. And uh, online transfers. So, and also, uh, and, and that is where uh, the risk is. So we need to cover consumers. So uh, we should have a, a system where you, uh, when the delivery versus payment at the doorstep, the, the uh, actually some companies follow at the moment, but we need to market that and also we had to inform consumers and, th and that is the one thing. And also as a consumer uh, affairs authority, we, ha we, we have the uh, right to uh, look at the products and services the demand and supply for the production services in Sri Lanka. Okay, that's interesting. So, yeah, and we need to manage the stocks. We should not have, you know, cust uh, the consumer right. One consumer right is basically you have to have, you have, you have to, you have the right to buy whatever thing freely. You can't say then when you walk into a shop and uh, the shop owner can't say that I don't have flour, I don't have rice, something like that. So we are, we we have the a right. Freedom of choice. Uh, yeah, and we and and. It's our duty to manage stocks as well, produce, mm -hmm. and we know the uh, the 
as a, a simple example uh, about paddy yes. and the rice issue. Very heavily debated and spoken about. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, we know uh, the number of acres being harvested in Sri Lanka this time. And we know the uh, end uh, harvest as well. So we know that where this crop goes to and who has it, the stocks. So, and with that, actually, we are developing so, so many systems. In Sri Lanka. We, are, we, are go, we are going to develop a, a complete system for, especially to monitor these stocks and uh, the consumer pro produce. So what you're saying is, it's my right as a Sri Lankan to have a proper supply of some of these essential items in the market as well, where I'm able to go and purchase. Yes. And if somebody is trying to, let's say, keep an extra exodus of stocks and trying to manipulate the price, yes. that violates my consumer right. Exactly. You can't basically uh, uh, buy, uh, uh, buy and stock unnecessarily, thinking of you know, selling at a higher price later. That's manipulating. That's against our, against our constitution, against our act. So it's a viol consumer violation. So that's we are there. That's why we are in we are in the process of you know uh, as you asked. So we are developing a new system to monitor everything. Actually, uh, our this was an idea of our state minister, uh, uh, state minister for our authority, and that's one of his ideas to build the system. And uh, even this was uh, requested by the H E himself. So then we can see the excess stocks, and especially now there is a d issue with the vegetable supply. Yes, we, they, we they see about it. Very yes, regularly. there is enough supply around Sri Lanka. People and and we are so lucky to live in a country like this. We can grow anything in this soil. So we have enough production. But only thing is, where is it in the market? We we, we are not basically there's bad, there, no, there's excess supply. There's a demand as well in Colombo. So the the people in between are making money. So I think we should have a proper mechanism to you know from the, from the uh, from the uh, farmer to the end user, a proper system. So that's why we are thinking of all the systems and we are looking at the, uh, as soon as we install these systems and uh, yes, we should be able to manage it. So what you're saying is there's also a lot of digital technology coming into the Consumer Affairs Authority, yes. am I right? Yes, very true. And uh, so with that, there'll be better efficient collection of information, yeah. maybe better tracking of where the exactly. different products are. Exactly. And also uh, there, uh, it's a consumer rights, basically they can log into our page even now, we have our official website, so you can log into our page. And there you can there. share the URL. This is, this is something of national importance. We normally, we if it's a private brand or something, we don't talk about it, but this is something of national importance. So yes. please, share yeah, the website. Our website is uh, www.caa.gov.lk. Right. caa.gov.lk. Okay. And also, just type Consumer Affairs Authority you can on the search bar, then you should, you should be able to get there. Right. And in that, there are many information, and you can interact with us. So that's the key factor because uh, many pe very few people are interacting with us. But where the entire Sri Lankan consumers can come and interact with us, they can tell and they can suggest us, look here, if, if, a, if, a, if a farmer, he can say that, look here, I, I, I have a couple of acres of paddy. I don't have a buyer. So that's where they are because we can suggest uh, we so can so even you can even help them to find a suitable buyer yes actually uh, not suitable buyer but so un under the trade ministry because we can link them yes interesting so so we are looking at all these uh, angles so it's a very holistic aspect isn't it when you say consumerized yes. protection it's not only about when something has been bought and when they are facing a grievance it's even beyond that making sure they have a steady supply, steady supply. there is so much of uh, scope coming under this uh, authority and it's great to hear that it's being upgraded and updated and you're bringing in the new technology as well. Yeah. So uh, indeed, uh, keep up the good work there, Viraj. We are going to come back to you uh, very soon. With that, we will take a quick break and I will see you on the other side. Stay tuned. This is Bisnomics. <music> Welcome back to Bisnomics. And to all the consumers out there, I'm quite sure that what you are hearing is definitely music to your ears. The amount of rights you have, the ways in which you can get your rights protected, I think a lot of things we as Sri Lankans didn't know about is indeed being highlighted in today's discussion and a very insightful one indeed with a board member from the Consumer Affairs Authority, Viraj Pereira. Viraj, now let's talk about the importance of this to the economy. We spoke about different rights, the mechanisms, etc. But 
how important is having proper consumer protection for the economy of Sri Lanka? Because in you know, many of the developed economies around the world, we see they are very vocal, they are very vociferous about their consumer rights. Do you think that this is also the way forward for us and having proper consumer rights will strengthen our economy? Yes, obviously. Uh, actually, this is a very, uh, very important uh, institution in Sri Lanka. Uh, as, I, as we mentioned that uh, around the world, these consumer protection authorities uh, are like, you know, it's kind of a, a, a decision making body and because it has so many, uh, you know, powers to look after the consumer. But in Sri Lanka, in Sri Lanka, we have the same powers because we have the right to look after consumers. Uh, yes, for economy, when you have a confident customers, they'll buy more. Good point. Yes. When they know that they are not going to get cheated, and cheated that there is somebody right. protecting them. That's right. When and also, when you when when we are there to look after them, you know, a high quality, healthy, chemical free products system, they'll buy more, and with that. Their lifestyles, life styles will change. Get upgraded. Upgraded, and uh, we don't have to, uh, you know, spend millions and millions on health issues because government is spending a lot of money on health, especially as we know that we have a, uh, now uh, we recently we uh, stop importing the uh, uh, fertilizer, chemical fertilizer. Has it stopped? Or is it in discussion? Disc discussion actually currently stopped. But okay. at we actually it will take some time for basically for us to get into that level, you know, fully 100% organic. Mm. It Gradually we will go there. But you have to start somewhere. Exactly. You have to start somewhere. Because with that, do you know there's a center in Anwadapura, especially for uh, uh, kidney patients? That's why? Because, you know, the the agriculture happens, ag happens in, that, in that northern pr province. There's a yeah. special hospital there. When you go there, you see number of patients waiting to get their medication or dialysis or whatever. There are so many kidney issues. But all these people are ex farm They are farmers. But and we have more than 2 million farmers in Sri Lanka. Farmers, which means that farmers, they have used so many chemicals. That, the, that, that, that we, have, we, have basically, we have consumed that produce. If that's what they, it did to them, what it might be doing to us now. Yes, actually now these, these chemicals going around in Sri Lanka. So we eat uh, basically uh, uh, vegetables and uh, uh, food with consider of chemicals. So that's why and we are thinking of, you know, uh, that's, our, that's, that's our one of our duties basically. We want to make this, you know, healthy, chemical free and a proper safe product to the, safe product to the consumer. And that's one of the rights. And I think when 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 we when when we when we achieve that thing, and the automatically economy will be uh, go to a different level. Because so when you have healthy people, they and, can uh, be more productive and, and in the product life and also e efficient lifestyle. Excellent thoughts, yeah. uh, Viraj. Viraj, let's uh, talk about uh, some advice for any business owners who are watching this show. Now, I believe sometimes the business owners might see the CA as a bit of an enemy. Here they come. Here comes the army marching. Yeah, but they might also want to know. Okay, look, but there are a lot of businesses that they want to do the right thing, and they are very honest in what they do. But sometimes maybe they have missed some information, or they don't know what they are doing is actually wrong. Due to all these reasons, they might fall into trouble. How can businesses work with the Consumer Affairs Authority? How can they get the right information? And what do they need to know? Any business owner who is watching this show, what do they need to know? Uh, with uh, regard to consumer rights so that they can do things properly? Uh, it's a simple thing. Uh, it's a matter of reading the uh, 2003, the Consumer Protection Act. That's simple. That's the law. So, and if they want further details, any uh, manufacturer or any uh, uh, business owner or maybe a, a startup, they can call us anytime on 1976. We can help on that as well. And you can email with us log into our website you get all the email addresses and uh, telephone numbers you can call us before you start the business and we can definitely we can ad advise them and we want more you know uh, good markets in sri lanka to cater to sri lankan communi uh, community absolutely so that's that's our main objective so anyone can call us and basically we are happy to help them we are happy to direct them 
And uh, I would say this is uh, even this Consumer Affairs Act of 2003 is freely available uh, in our website and also um, uh, they can call us and we can basically give, send them a uh, soft copy as well. So just go through it. It covers everything. Viraj, now I want to ask you, I did touch upon this before, but just to reiterate, regardless of all these warnings and all these cases and what gets covered on media, every now and then when there is some scam system that comes up and they say, keep your money with us for two weeks, we'll give you the product in two weeks' time, people end up falling for this and they lose millions. Why do you think that this is actually happening? Is it that people are too ignorant and they are too gullible or... Is there some problem with the system? Uh, well, uh, I would say it's basically lack of inform information. So, uh, people should know what their rights are. And uh, even, even the sellers, they should know what they're heading towards. So, there's a gap. Yeah. So, you should, that's why as I said that you should better read this Consumer Act. Then you, even I read it recently. So, it covers the entire, what do you call it, the uh, consumer All the market. economic activities. Yeah, consumer market, actually. From FMCG to the hypermarkets to the you know, consumer durables. Even to the technology products. Technology, everything being covered. You have the right, because you pay something, and you have the right to buy something according to the amount, according to the amount you pay. Correct. That's your right. Correct. You have to have the value for that, your money. So that's your right. And Viraj, let me ask you, if something sounds too good to be true, it actually is too good to be true, isn't it? I mean, there's something probably wrong somewhere because sometimes you hear about various schemes where, let's say a mobile phone that might be about 2 lakhs. Then they say, okay, this is going for, we are giving it to you at, let's say, 1 lakh 40,000 or 1 lakh 30,000. And one needs to ask, how is it actually possible? There might be actually something wrong with that system and people knowingly, without thinking too much, they fall into trouble. Exactly. So, it's... Uh, people always should uh, think before they buy and they, and as I, as we discussed this is a commercial world so everybody wants to basically make money out of a simple thing simple get that, rich quick exactly so and uh, always you should check who the supplier is who's the basically online platform what their backgrounds are and uh, and also on the other hand the people who have basically faced mm. issues they have to update us. Then we are there they to look up. Yes, they need to talk. They need to voice out without keeping quiet. They need to voice out, and they have to basically tell us, "Look here, we bought this particular phone from this particular person, yeah. and this we is what happened." This issue. Yeah. Yeah. So then we can act without a proper information. How we cannot act. So if people come and tell us more about all these, you know, malpractices, then we are there to uh, basically uh, voice out on behalf of them. And Viraj also. Just because there are a lot of happy customers speaking out about a particular company on Instagram or Facebook doesn't mean that everything is going well. There can be so many other malpractices. Exactly. So one needs to be careful. Just because you hear good on Instagram or Facebook, don't believe and go and fall into the trap. Exactly. And th these are marketing tools. You know, people can, you know, you can have uh, about 1,000 likes by paying some uh, like dollars. For likes farm. Yeah, exactly. There are people like that. And also you can, if you want to uh, get more comments, you can get comments. Correct. So these these are what you call uh, uh, I I would say the weak side of digital marketing. So we Absolutely. should yeah. So we you should know what, what where you heading towards and Correct. what you buy and where you buying from. Viraj, on a final note, let's talk about the how tough the CA can get, right? Now, if a business is caught violating some of these consumer rights, let's say if a business a businessman who is watching wants to know, okay, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I need to check on that, but if I get if I get pulled up, if I get complained on, what are the penalties and what kind of uh, problems or difficulties are they facing? Let yes. we, let's tell them that yeah. so that they will know yeah. uh, not to mess with consumer rights. Mm. Um, but Tarindu, I, I think you would have seen that you know uh, we have our chairman is a ex Milton chairman is a, a major general, so that's uh, appointed by the uh, ex central president. So basically, to deliver that. And even the executive directors and the board and the other directors are who are working full time are now they have changed. And because with the new management, we are working towards this uh, our goal, which starts of possibility. We have clearly mentioned that we are there to look after the consumer, so we all are working that. And uh, I know, yes, it will be 
really tough for the uh, all these you know, malpractices so they in the can, future. They, they can lose their license too? No, uh, actually uh, these are uh, uh, the key fines. Are, uh, it depends on the violation. It's absolutely, yes. Yeah, so sometimes they, uh, it may include fines or maybe closures or maybe confiscation of goods or maybe it, uh, both. Let's admit it. I mean, there, there is a pandemic globally and we never know for sometimes there might be certain travel restrictions and lockdowns, etc. So then you always see some of these fraudulent parties trying to make the most quick you know, money out of a quick website, charge extremely high amount and then make your money. But be careful because as a consumer, it's our right to be protected from these. And uh, I wish to also thank uh, you and the rest of the team at Consumer Affairs Authorities for doing your best. Do keep doing your part because as you very correctly said, uh, Viraj, having good consumer rights protection in, a, in an economy will mean consumers will get more confident and that gets the economy more bustling and exactly. that's exactly what we need for this country. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us today and wish you good luck with the future endeavors. Thank you so much. With that, we wrap up today's episode of Biznomics. And remember, if you are a business owner, make sure that you are not violating any consumer rights. If you are a consumer, 1977 is the number to call whenever if you feel that your consumer rights have been violated. Have a good week ahead. I'll see you with the next episode.